This episode is part of the pool's Local Officials Stronger Together podcast series. It's one way we serve local officials through integrity, public service, fiscal responsibility, and operational excellence. As always, please direct specific questions about coverage to your member services manager. Welcome to episode 16 in the Risk Pool Stronger Together podcast series. Today's episode is Are You Prepared? Before, During, and After the Storm. As always, I'm going to give you some basic information, visit with people who are experts in the subject, and then give you several action items to help you get everything you can from our partnership. First, let's talk about some context. Hurricane season began on June 1st and forecasters at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration are predicting above-average hurricane activity this year. NOAA's outlook for 2022 for the Atlantic hurricane season, which lasts until November 30th, predicts a 65% chance of an above-normal season. That means a likely range of 14 to 21 named storms, of which 6 to 10 could become hurricanes, including 3 to 6 major hurricanes and NOAA predicts these ranges with a 70% confidence rate. So while we always hope for the best, we should always plan for the worst. And to that end, the pool recently conducted three hurricane preparedness workshops for members along the coast. Thanks to the cities of Deer Park, Victoria, and Brownsville for hosting us for those. The workshops were very comprehensive, and a video of the presentation, along with the PowerPoint and some additional forms and documents, is linked below this podcast. In this episode, I want to boil down what they did at that presentation to the few most important things you can do to be prepared for hurricane damage before, during, and after the storm. Right. I'm now joined by Taylor Matheny with Synergy National Disaster Solutions. Synergy is a trusted risk pool partner that provides turnkey recovery, repair, or replacement to hurricane damaged structures, or really to any structure that's been damaged or destroyed in some way. You can learn more about that program in Episode 6 of the series, which includes interviews with city officials who have had great experiences with it. Synergy was born in Florida, and after seeing the work they did in that state, we knew we needed them to help out members as well. Welcome, Taylor. Taylor, tell us about before the storm. What are the top couple of things that a local official needs to know to get prepared before the storm? Yes, Scott. So before the storm is really our planning time. That's the time to get ready for these events. Once we've hit the five to seven day cone mark, you know, typically that's when it's time to to really activate our plan. So before the storm is all about developing our plan. So first, most important thing is developing and updating our continuity of operations plans. All right. So understand the needs of our people and let's, and let's then create our, our continuity of operations plans around them. And so the continuity of operations plan, we know that there are actual formal emergency management plans that, you know, end up in six inch binders with annexes and all types of detailed information. And those are important, but that's a little bit different than what you're talking about, right? Yes, yeah, Scott. And those, those type of large comprehensive plans are great. You know, one thing that I love to remind people is that, uh, you know, keep it simple in these cases. Um, oftentimes these plans are going to be shared amongst large groups of people in possibly the days and hours leading up to an event. So keeping it simple and keeping these continuity of operations plans short is really the key here. You know, these plans can take a long time to develop. So, you know, not necessarily knowing where each individual organization may be in terms of their continuity of operations planning. We've got some great resources to help get you started if if you're looking for some resources on that. Absolutely. And you had shared some of that at our workshops and you had sent it over to me and we will link uh, some of those documents below this podcast. So planning and your continuity of operations plan is numero uno when you're talking about before the storm. What's the second thing that you think folks should be aware of in that time period? Second most important step in the before the storm portion is reviewing and updating your insurance schedules. 
this should be something that's done on at least an annual basis. And the purpose of this is really to do two things, Scott. Number one, we want to make sure that all of the assets that we own and intend to insure are insured. And secondly, we want to make sure that each of those insured assets are insured up to their appropriate value. That helps reduce any gaps in coverage at the time in which a loss may occur. And so that is, there's actually a spreadsheet that y'all sent us to help uh, a local official go building by building to prepare that, right? Correct. And so doing that continuity of operations plan worksheet by building actually does two things. It helps develop a, a mini coup plan for each individual asset. And at the same time, it can help us in reviewing and updating our insurance schedule. That's awesome. And so we know that those are two things you want to do before the storm. Tell us a little bit about the two most important things you think a local official should uh, be doing during the storm. Yes, yeah, Scott. So, so during the storm, uh, first most important step is going to be to activate and communicate your plan. We want to make sure that uh, all involved stakeholders are not only aware of your plan, but they also understand what your plan entails. Who's responsible for what items? What is going to be your marching order immediately following landfall? Okay. Second most important step is we're going to have to be flexible and we're going to have to adjust our plan based on the scenario. You know, unfortunately, Scott, um, things that can go wrong oftentimes do. These scenarios are incredibly fluid and we need to have not only the patience, but the awareness to be able to adjust our plan based upon the scenarios that are being presented to us. That sounds great. And so one of the things that we had talked about is it's probably an imperative that a city or other local government work through some of that uh, with a with a realistic table talk exercise, right? And in fact, one that where certain variables might be thrown in that they weren't expecting. Absolutely. Kind of here in our pre-planning stages, it's a great idea to get everybody in the room together. And let's talk about some things that that could go wrong or some or some wrenches that could be thrown into our plan. And just, again, ways that we might react to that. You know, again, I always talk about how the reason that people like our first responders are are constantly training and they're and they're doing drills and they're and they're modeling different scenarios is that you know research shows that when we're faced with traumatic or catastrophic situations our brains naturally revert to the lowest level of training that we've ever received on something so the more pictures that we can create in our minds the better and the quicker we'll be able to react to adverse situations. That's awesome. And so the main reason that the risk pool has partnered with Synergy is the turnkey recovery aspect of what y'all do. So episode six of our podcast series goes into some, some more detail and interviews some city officials who've had experience with how good y'all are on the backside of a hurricane or really anything else. And so While we've tapped you to help us with this kind of presentation, y'all's forte is really the post-disaster stuff. So tell us a little bit about the two or three things that a local official should be doing after the storm. Yes, Scott. So after the storm, the most important step is that we're completing our damage assessments in a timely fashion and that we're reporting all property damage to the pool first. All right. So there might be some other funding opportunities down the road that may present themselves. But again, it's important to remember that the risk pool is going to be your first and primary source of funding in these events. Right. And that's true even if there's other coverage that may be relevant, whether it's TWIA or something else that they have. But if they start with the pool, we can help guide them through the process. Correct. Got it. Okay, so after after those damage assessments are done and you're reporting to the pool or the appropriate insurance company, tell us about what's next. Yeah, so step number two is going to be that we're going to want to act swiftly, but we want to be cautious of going too fast. You know, sometimes moving too quickly 
can actually jeopardize recovery funding. So we want to do things like we want to mitigate, we want to stabilize property, we want to make property safe. But in doing so, we want to make sure that we're communicating with the risk pool and any other coverage providers that may be available. And again, the biggest thing is we want to act swiftly. We want to make sure that our property is stable. But at the same time, moving too quickly and doing too much before you're communicating what's happening on the ground could potentially jeopardize recovery funding. Got it. And the third step that you think is the most important? Third step and probably most important would be following procurement guidelines. Okay, so this not only covers our state and federal procurement, but we want to make sure that we're procuring services in the same manner in which we would if this weren't a disaster. Okay, this includes any third party contractors that you all may hire to assist with the procurement. Want to make sure that those folks are familiar with both federal and state requirements. But we also want to make sure that they're mirroring your typical procurement process as if you were procuring it by yourself. Got it. One of the reasons that we have you on, one of the reasons that Synergy National Disaster Solutions is a risk pool trusted partner is because of the help that you can provide on the back end with that. Now, we may have some members that want to procure things and do the repairs themselves, but I think folks that listen to episode six and talk to y'all about what you do uh, would be remiss and not at the very least considering what it is that you do. And, and you can help as little or as much as is needed, is my understanding. But the, the best thing that we have you here to do is you can basically take them from, you know, hurricane damaged or destroyed building to up and running as a turnkey process where they don't have to worry about it and they don't have to worry about the procurement and you have a separate department in your company that deals with FEMA issues. So you've got the expertise to get them back up and running for uh, the most reasonable price in the quickest time with the least hassle. That's correct. (laughs) And, and, you know, having, having done this for over 20 years, we recognize that our municipalities and these different types of organizations, their people are wearing a lot of different hats during these times. So really, Turnkey's role in this is to help serve as an extension of your staff. So we're here to assist with uh, with damage assessments. We're here to assist with your reporting to the risk pool. We're here to assist with uh, the scoping of the damage, helping facilitate the procurement on your behalf, overseeing the work that's being done, and ultimately getting it to a closed out point to where members are back in their buildings. That's that's incredible. I've dealt with a lot of folks that work with cities and other local governments and I've been more impressed with your group than any that I've ever dealt with. So thank you for working with the pool and thanks for helping educate me personally as I learn about these risk management issues. So appreciate you being with us today, Taylor. Thanks for having us, Scott. I appreciate it. Okay, welcome back. This is the part where we talk about your action items. Action item number one, this is before the storm. Prepare your continuity of operations plans and update your schedules. You can do those updates at any time in the member portal, which is linked below this podcast. And you can use the spreadsheet linked below as well to review each building that you have. Action item two, this is during the storm. Activate and communicate your continuity of operations plans. Who does what during landfall? Also, be flexible because the situation can change quickly. Practice at least once per year with a table talk exercise, throwing in new variables. Training matters. And then finally, action item three, which is after the storm. Step one is to complete damage assessments quickly and report them to the pool. We are the place to start, even if you have other coverage for some losses. Step two, act quickly, but also deliberately, so you make the property that's been damaged stable. And then step three, most important, be sure to follow local, state, and federal procurement guidelines. Finally, listen to episode six to learn more about Synergy's turnkey recovery program, which can help you through the procurement issues you'll be facing. Okay, that's it. 
Thanks for listening. It's time to get prepared for hurricanes before, during, and after the storm. So let's roll. To review written materials associated with the presentation or to ask Scott a question, please visit www.tmlirp.org and click on the Stronger Together podcast link. Please remember that the information in this episode is provided for informational purposes only and doesn't constitute legal advice. We recommend that you review the podcast and the accompanying written materials with your attorney prior to taking action.